what's up guys we're gonna real beats today i'm gonna be showing you guys an all-in-one um where we do the arrangement the mixing and mastering effects glitch effects all of that all right so if you guys haven't subbed already or turn post notifications on make sure you do so because it does help out a lot let's hop right into this um so first thing that you'll need is a beat now we made a beat together in a follow along video i will leave the link in the description for you if you want to check that out or just do it yourself um and then there's a gross beat video because if you have fl you will need to know how to use gross beat now if you're using a different daw or whatever you'll have to find third-party plugins or um find something similar i know shaper box is something that's um really similar to gross beat um but you know i wish there was a universal way where we can all use the same plugins but you know it's not really possible right now but um this is just what we're working with so the first one we're going to start with is the arrangement okay so assuming you have your beat ready all right you should have about the same instruments and everything that i do all right so what i like to do is color code them all right and especially for this video so it's just easier to look so you know i usually group my instruments together my perks and then my main drums okay and then one thing that i want to note on my channel um instead of saying like eight bars or whatever um, I usually go by, I'll just say a block. And what that means, especially you see this highlighted area, that's just one block. So four bars would just be one block. And the reason for this is because not everybody knows how to count, um, you know, beats or bars or whatever. So it's just easier to just say a block and you can visually see it. All right. So if you see me, hear me say block, that's why, but I will use both terms throughout. Okay. Just so everybody can kind of get it. So first thing you need to do with the arrangement um is basically just pull everything in and then what i like to do is just set everything up so i would just copy everything over like so so now we have a full eight bar loop okay so now i'm going to give you guys a universal structure that you can use on any bpm um besides half time because obviously everything is cut in half so you'll have to cut your structure in half, okay? So this is what you can do. So it doesn't matter the BPM, you can do it 160, you can do it at 120, doesn't matter. But I'm at 140, that's kind of like a, a mid uh, BPM. So I like to move it over. All right, so this eight bars or two blocks here, right, will be my intro. And then will usually be the ones with, the less, with less energy. So probably like this, uh, so like this instrument, then we could probably try this one. Something like that. And then maybe for this beat, I will put an 808 in there, but we don't have to do that. We can just kind of leave it as is. All right, so now we got our hook. So you take, this is our full hook, right? Our full melody. Okay, if yours looks like, let's say yours looks like this, for example, All right? If your melody is somewhat like this, then you'll just do this four times, okay? Let me pull those back. So basically I'd make my hook twice. I put my hook down twice, right? Just like this. And now, you know, people say, oh, give me 16 bars, right? That's exactly how long your verse is going to be. And this can work for any BPM. All right, like I said, the halftime one won't uh, really apply because, you know, you're going to have to pretty much just do eight bars instead of 16. But so this is our uh, our hook. OK, and I'll name everything and I'll have a download link in the description with everything, all the presets we're going to make in this video. So now moving on to the verse and real quick, one thing I like to do on this part of the hook, I usually just take out a few instruments so you can literally just, you know, take out a few things. It doesn't matter what it is or just add one thing. Okay. So now let's copy this full part over one more time twice because now this is our verse and I know it's getting kind of crazy. So I'm gonna highlight it for you. Let me zoom over. Probably zoom in a little bit more. So I like to take the high energy instrument out. So that would be this top one. 
Okay, so we'll take that one out and maybe take out one of these. Um, this vocal has a lot more energy than this uh, like reversed um, sound. It's a lot more under the radar, so I'm gonna take out the bottom one, okay? So now with this right here, I usually take out all of the perks or at least some of them. So we can just take some of these out, maybe add a few back in at the end, okay? And then now we could just modify um, some stuff. So I'll take out the kick usually for this first half, bring it back in, take it back out. Now this part is completely up to you on what you want to do here, but this is just what I do. Um, and then what we can do with the 808, what I always do is take out some of the notes. So let's double click and we're going to edit so that it's, we have less notes. So let me zoom in so we can see. So we can just listen to it and just kind of let it flow. So I'm going to actually pull this one down and then we can probably just do something like that at first, right? All right, so it's more under the radar. So let's copy that over. So now we have a finished verse and then you could chop off this. So it's kind of like a, like a, in, like an intro into the, or like a pre-hook, I guess, or a bridge. I don't know what they call it, but something that goes into this. Okay, so that's pretty much the arrangement. And now all you have to do now, I'm sure you've seen people do this a lot. You just copy it over or you can press control B and then it should be about two to three minutes. All right. And we can just cut this off and then your outro, you can just copy your intro to the end and boom should be. Yep. That's about the average. Okay. So that is the arrangement. And real quick, I'm going to just go ahead and show you what the uh, markers would be. Okay. So this is what it would look like. Okay. You got an eight bar intro outro. And then for the rest, everything is 16 bars. All right. Or you could just go by four blocks per hook and verse. All right. So now we're going to move on to the next subject. All right. So we're just going to go over gain staging real quick. Now, I don't think this is necessary to do. I think it just adds a layer of difficulty for beginners because it's like you do it anyway, right? So basically how to do it is save right here, right? You can see my kick is like way in the red. So basically when you gain stage, you just want to make sure those peaks are somewhat in the green. All right. Just to really, really dumb it down. That's pretty much what you're doing. But real quick, a lot of people do the gain staging here, which is fine. But when it comes to instruments, you want to gain, you want to turn the the source down. Not this volume, not the fader, not right here. You want to turn the source down where the sound is coming from. You want to turn that down when you're doing this. Okay. For instruments. Now with samples, the source is, you know, this knob, there's not, you know, it's not really coming from anywhere. All right. So I just want to clarify that. Um, but yeah, I don't really think this is necessary, but I wanted to mention it because it is something that people do. Um, if you do this correctly, you have a really, really clean mix, but I just kind of like the grittiness of, you know, the, the peak and kick and, the, you know, the soft clipper and stuff. Right. Um, so that's just a preference. But yeah, that's pretty much game staging. So now let's move on to the next part. OK, so now we're going to do our setup for the actual mixer. So basically, let's go back here and I'll just throw this right here on um, what you want to do is click and hold drag everything so you see these like these little green bricks make sure these are highlighted and then you will come to your first now there's shortcuts for this but i'll just show you the longer way to do it you right click on the first one and then you go to channel routing and then go to route selected channels starting from this track and it should lay out all of them in order now how to color these you can just highlight some go to change color and you can change the color here all right now you're like wondering, how do I separate them? So say um, you want, let's just do one right here. Let's make this blue. 
make this yellow so say you want to separate these you choose the one the the next one that switches color so one right here and you right click and then go to separate and we'll put a separator right here and let me make these brighter so you can see the actual thing let's make it the green you see now there's a separator there so that's how i did that all right that's how you set this up and i just like to stay organized especially for the video so that um it's easier to see let's throw one right here oh we did way too many okay so last thing you need to know how to do is put your instruments in a bus all right so this is if you look down below these are routed here so what you want to do is hold control click and drag including the one the empty channel so usually you will have an empty channel like this okay and then you would just highlight everything and right click on that empty channel and then you can go to track routing and then you can want to go to route selected to this track only all right and there's other options but this is just the one that we're going to do for now all right so let me move this back because i already have that done so now all of these tracks should be going into this so whatever effects you put on this will happen to everything all right so that's pretty much the setup so now let's move on to the leveling all right, so now let's do the leveling and I have plenty of videos on leveling and showing different ways to do it. So in this one, I'm gonna try to show you an easier way. So for this, you might wanna put yours on extra large and how you do that is you just click this up here and you can change um, the look of your mixer. I do extra large uh, just so it's, you know, everything's easier to see. Now, what I'm gonna show you is not the best way or the right way to do it, but it will give you a good result no matter what so what you need to do right now highlight all these pull everything down to zero now what i like to do is pull my 808 and kick up now the reason for this is because my 808 and kick is going to give me everything it's kind of like the chords um how the chord is your like foundation and everything else after that kind of shapes to your chords same thing here your kick and 808 is going to drive your beat okay besides the melody but um if you get these right it's easier to get these right and if you get these right it's easier to get your perks right and once you have this stuff done it's easier to kind of mix or level your melodies and i'm gonna show you what i mean so i like to do negative 6 db below the kick so i put the kick at zero right and now i pull this down negative 6 db now a lot of people they um think that this is it right you still want to adjust it this does not mean keep this ratio this is just a ratio to start now if you, if your 808 is too low so so i'm gonna just play it i kind of like the way that the ratio is there okay and i probably need to put this in mono now do not put my 808s in mono in mono because i just don't like the sound um but say this 808 is too low for you You'll pull it up a db or so and maybe for you you're like all right that that's too loud i need to go low you can pull it down right and i will argue that's a, even a little cleaner so i'm gonna just keep it at six so now what we want to do is highlight both of these and then want to pull them down until this is around negative six all right so, and you gotta be careful with these knobs because they distort, um, depending on what layout you have, but it hasn't really been a problem for me, so. So we're right at about negative six. And this is what I was talking about gain staging is because look, nothing is hitting in the red now. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go to our clap and our hi-hat, and these are our main drums. If we get these right, then we'll get these right. So my clap, I usually put my clap somewhere at the 808, um, but no higher than my kick. Okay, so none of these drums should be higher than your kick, but it should be somewhere either around this 808. So I'm just pull it up somewhere around there. And this is assuming that none of your drums are super loud for no reason. All right, so.
I think that's decent for now. Hi-hat, we can kind of pull it up around there as well. And then adjust it. All right, so now for the perks, this is like the easiest way to do it. And depending on what DAW you use, this may not make any sense. But for me, I usually, the, you see the top of this knob? I usually put this at the bottom of the hi-hat. And the reason for that is because I don't really like the perks to be like front and center. I like it to support these main drums. And that's why I have always, you always see me have them separated in videos. Um, but if this is too low, of course you can adjust. But this is like the easiest way I can think of to mix and probably turn them up a little bit. All right, so th those are the drums. So now the instruments. Now I usually do the loudest one. Um, I don't like it to go above the kick. Um, but sometimes you might have to because sounds and instruments are a little different than just these drums. So and actually I gotta turn this bus all the way back up. And a good way to kind of gauge if you're uh well to let you know if you're doing it right is if you turn it down, you should be able to hear at least these main drums and the melody. All right, and I can still hear it. Now you can put it in mono if you want. I kind of stopped doing that a long time ago just because, I don't know, I just stopped doing it. But if you want to do it in mono, you can. Reset. I might even turn it down just even a little bit more. Now these, same thing. You don't want it to really be higher than this. You kind of just ballpark it. I can even solo this since this is going to be in the verse. You want to make sure this is you're able to hear it. Let's play it all together now. All right, so now you have a level beat. So let's go ahead and do like some effects or maybe even the mastering. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly go over some effects. Um, I just preloaded them because this video is gonna be already, it's gonna be too long already. So I just wanna save time by doing this. And these presets will be in the download link in the description for you. So don't worry about getting these. Um, so for the EQ, I just took out some of the low ends. All right, I just pretty much just drug this over and pulled it down, all right. And then boosted some frequencies I like. Okay, that's pretty much all I did. And you don't need to do this, but this is just something I personally wanted to do. This does not mean you have to do this. All right, you could just leave this blank if you want. All right, now the wave shaper, this is kind of the thing that I did here. All right, just pull this up around here. And you can pretty get some get some really good distortion on 808s. And then this is what it sounds like with the full. Um, all right, and I just pull it down. And the reason I do this is so it's just a lot clearer, right? And just you can hear it a lot better. All right, so now the next one would be for our instruments, and this is why we made an instrument bus. Okay, and this update is going crazy because nothing is seems to be working. Um, but we have a fruity convolver and this is the, like the setting I have. Um, again, you can just use a reverb, but I just really like this one. And I'll just play it. And that's what it would sound like. And now we got effect effector. And I'm just using this like transient thing. And this is to give it some bounce as well. Um, you can just see where I put this and I'll play it. Okay, and the last thing that I added was the gross beat, uh, two times speed.
And then the last thing, and you, you can customize this. Don't feel like you need to have this preset, but you can customize it. I just did a compressor. All right. And just pull the game down. That's because, um, this can get really loud. Okay. So just control it a little bit. All right, just give a, the verse a different feel. But yeah, that's it for the effects. And now we're gonna move on to the actual mastering and then the beat chops and everything. All right, so now we're gonna master it. Now you have this preset already, but this one's a little bit more enhanced and I'm gonna actually show you how to use Maximus. All right, so let's go in here. And basically the first thing you wanna do is it's gonna look like this. What you wanna do is click, click off a monitor and go to bands. Now, this is the first thing you want to do. All right. Um, and I'll show you what it does. It's just going to manipulate the frequency. It's kind of like an EQ. OK, so. You see how it clears up all that low end. I usually put mine somewhere around where this thing is, this little purple, uh, I guess, rectangle. Um, somewhere around there. All right. Around 20 to 30 hertz, somewhere around there. OK. All right, and with this, it's kind of hard to hear sometimes like where exactly these can be or should be, but I usually put this around um, 100 for my low. And then for my high, I kind of extend it a little bit, but not too much. So somewhere around um, here, okay? So this is original and I just kind of move it up just a bit. All right, so that's the first thing that you need to do when you go ahead and use Maximus. Now, let's go ahead and go to the low end. And with these little compressors here, I like to boost these up just a little bit. And this is all preference. You can boost them up a lot. You can see how you can really shape the sound and get something you really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I like that one. So now uh, we wanna do our, let's go back to monitor and then we wanna boost and post, okay? And just adjust it to where we like it. So. All right, I think that's good. So now let's go ahead and move on to the mids. So for our mids, same thing, um, just do the compressor and our post. All right. So Okay, so now it's sounding a little bit muffled. So now we wanna adjust these highs. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna do a little bit more um, on the comp so that it kind of compensates for all this low end. Let's pull this up to like three or somewhere around there. Okay, so now everything is clear and we got everything how we want it. So now let's go to this master. And now what I'm gonna do is do the same thing here, but we're gonna edit more of these settings. So and then I put my pre to like, you can do, you know, negative zero point, whatever. I usually do like double. So, you know, people say negative 0 0.3. Wait, yeah, negative, yeah, negative 0 0.3 dB. I do double that. So I do like negative uh, 0 0.6. So you can look up here and you can see the numbers. OK, 
Okay. And we can boost it in post just a little bit. Now down here is our saturation. All right, and this is gonna, this is pretty much what the soft clipper does already. Um, but I usually put this threshold somewhere between like zero, like one and 5%. And it's just to make sure that these peaks aren't super harsh. Um, at least that's what I think is doing. And then match this ceiling with this pre. So it should be a, a negative 0 0.6. So these should be, should match. Um, of course, that doesn't mean you have to do that every single time, but um, this is just a start and you can kind of modify this template as you go. And now you have your mix. Now let's close this. Stereo enhancer, all I'm doing here is separating it a little bit right here. And I already showed y'all this and increase the volume, turn it on. Now the stereo shaper, this is the preset left. So if you go in here, um, it's called left. All right, you put two of these on because if you put one, it only plays in one ear. Do another one. And then we just add that soft clipper. But with the soft clipper, what I do here is I put it to 74%. Um, you can kind of mess with this, but it's at 80% and I just turn it down a little bit. All right, and again, if that's too low, you can turn it up a little bit. And I think this is a little too low. And I think that's good. So now we're gonna move on to automation clips and um, gross beat effects and beat chops, all right? All right, so here's the last part. Now, this is pretty easy. Um, you just kind of gotta be creative here. So here's the first one I have, and I'll show you guys all this. And you'll have these presets as well. So using the repeat and gate, and this is for the chop. Now these, this is the easiest way to do it without having to bounce your beat down and then chop it up and then use third party plugins, you know, spend money, but this is not the best way. Okay. Um, there are way better plugins you can use to get these same effects. Okay. So, and I'll probably make a video showing those as well. And this is like the little vinyl off and on. Okay. And then we're going to put all these down as automation clips. So, Real quick, something you need to take note of. Do not put the mute in solo. So don't right click, and I probably need to make this a little smaller so you can see, but look. You see right here, when you solo it, do not create an automation clip for this because it's going to, it's not gonna, it's pretty much it's not gonna start on time and it's not gonna sound right. You wanna make sure it's on all the time and then you, adjust the mix level okay that's how you do it so let me pull this back up so first let's do our our mix bus right so we're going to right click create automation clip and i'm gonna just go ahead and fast forward through this and i'm just do it for every single one all right so now we got everything down here so what we need to do now this is a lot now what we need to do is open these because these are only going to be on our burst right and we can only put it on one part really so I'm going to take this right here and let me zoom in. So I'm going to take this little circle here and you can adjust it and pull these down. Okay. And then as the verse starts, you can turn these on. So you right click and hold to kind of move it. And then you can right click and hold again and pull them up. Okay. So that's how you kind of edit these. And if your if you're moving these and they're moving, like they're sliding like this, all I have to do is come up here and turn both of these off. Okay, so that's how you fix that. So we just gotta make sure it'll be smooth. And we need to turn these off. Real quick. And they're not on, there we go. So we might need to smooth this in a bit. And you just have to make adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and make adjustments and fast forward through this. 
all right so this could use some tweaking but you get the gist of it and at the end i kind of dipped it out so that it'll play all right so let's get to the good part the beat chop so i'm gonna just solo these or just get them out the way so now with these beat chops it's the same thing except now you just kind of be creative you can mix some together so we could probably and i will go on make sure your stuff is on beat so you can really fine tune it so we could just do some on the hook just because and I actually need to turn these down as I go. Do one here and see what that sounds like and turn these on. All right, you can see it's not exact as like you would hear in a song, but that's because most of the time we're using third party plugins that are made specifically for this stuff. All right, so, um. This is all you need to do. All right. So what I'm going to do and another way you can do this is bounce a part of the beat out so you can highlight this, bounce it out, and then you can manipulate the wave file. So I'm going to go ahead and just make something real quick and fast forward through that because this video has gone on too long and then you can kind of copy it if you want to. So I'm just go ahead and do that. All right, so I got done tweaking it. Now you will have to tweak this a lot because again, this is stock plugin. It's not, it's an all around thing. It's not meant for this and it's not meant to be like perfect. So you will have to tweak it to your liking. So I've got mine here and I'll just play it from here. Um, sometimes it plays through all the way right, but sometimes it doesn't. So you just have to kind of mess around, but here it is. All right, now with these like vinyl stops and stuff, they're kind of, they're a little iffy, but again, like I said, um, it's a stock plugin. This is the stock plugin way to do it. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I know this is a long video, um, but you know, it had to get done. So let me know if this helps you out down in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.